And I say the word work uh, really loosely <laughs> because um, it was like like research goals. It was uh, so, so fun to do actually and really rewarding um, to do that sort of research and very empowering. And so um, those are the things that I felt while I was doing the research. And so I hope some of that, uh, you know, gets uh, downloaded onto you guys today when we talk about it. Our community position has always been the same. So nine years later, our community position is we are opposing the development of the Ring of Fire. So I was unnecessarily dragged through the court system for over three years. I had to pay a very expensive lawyer. Um, so I still have legal fees, all for standing on the side of the road on my own lands, <laughs> fighting for my own lands, fighting for my culture, fighting for who I am. Um, you know, we have these massive bills and it's terrifying, right? We. A lot of people kind of say to me who have been following the Labrador Land Protector story, like, what are you guys up to lately? We haven't heard of you much. Like, what's going on? It's because we have to focus so much on fundraising for our lawyer. It's absurd. We have another about $20,000 to raise. Um, and we're only now getting to the end of the court process for some of the folks who were first arrested back in October of 2016. So, yeah. <laughs> You know, it's just one story, but there's so many examples all across, you know, what's currently called Canada of how injunctions really are like a bi legal billy club. And, you know, we're paying the price. There was this like really cool animation that was happening and it was all going all red and it looked like really weird. You know, though, though it was like mining claims, you know, over time and how mining claims, you know, throughout Turtle Island, specifically uh, the Canadian state. So, and it almost looked like a disease, like all of these things happening. And you think about that's, that's the dispossession of indigenous peoples from their land. That is a like when you dispossess peop indigenous peoples from their land, that's also dispossessing from their knowledge systems, you know, from their way of educating, you know, from their way of understanding, you know, which is a lot of their cultural um, and uh, cultural principles and values, which up uphold our, our societies and our communities. So, you know, development and resource extraction, as they say, is a lot of that um, violence to the land is violence to our bodies. That's what I'm hearing, you know, throughout, throughout our, our communities. And so by occupying and, and being back out on the lands, exer exercising our rights, you know, we're, we're then out there protecting our lands. When you have communities fighting over jurisdiction, fighting over resources, and fighting over whether or not, you know, we should build a mine or not, whether or not we should build a plant, processing plant in Sault Ste. Marie, or et cetera, et cetera, you know? I don't think First Nations in Canada can move forward ahead without talking about nationhood. So before nation to nation can happen, nationhood has, has to happen first. Miigwech. I think about some people who, who came before us, uh, those uh, indigenous thinkers, like I think it's Vine Delore Jr. said, if you want to be sovereign, act sovereign. And I think the other one was, you know, you don't be crying on the shoulder of the person who took your land, you know, by the late Arthur Manuel, something like that, right? So it, when, when, are we going to be asking the settler state to get our land back? Are we going to be asking to be recognized, to be self-determined? Like what type of sovereign nation asks and waits for permission in order to be self-determined, right? 